2024 in gaming right now where is a crazy year for video games. Like, after 2023, where we got a buttload of major AAA games, 2024 is kind of iffy because, like, a lot of major gaming studios, like a whole list of gaming studios is laying off a whole bunch of their employees, Sony, Microsoft, and all sorts of EA and all sorts of companies are are laying off employees and and people are worried is is, is there another video game crash like there was, most people know on the internet know, who knows basic gaming history, knows that back in 1983, there was a video game crash back in 1983 where there was an over-exaggeration of gaming consoles all over the market, and that's kind of the reason why it's a good thing that it's a three-party system of the console market, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony. It makes sense. That it's a good thing that there's only three competitors in the console wars. And lack in lack of quality control. And that was why we had a video game crash in 1983. But now is 2024. And I will say, yeah, we are in a video game crash right now but it's not as severe as the video game crash of 1983 and I'll and I'll tell you why so I think there are like three main reasons why there's a video game crash what you two of those are very similar is that one is a lot of companies are trying to do live service games, like like Rocksteady did made made one with Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and most live service games just make you spend money, and that's really it. And so many companies are trying to cash in on make trying to make the Fortnite dollars and. Make, make, make Fortnite money, which Fortnite is a live service game. And I'm not, I think most people will agree with me. I'm not into live service games at all. Like, the only ones that are really a cup of tea for me is Warframe and Team Fortress 2. Is Team Fortress 2 a live service game? I... Don't know. Besides from those two games, the ones that I tried personally, they're not my cup of tea. I tried Destiny 2, and that wasn't my cup of tea. And I tried Fortnite and Apex Legends and stuff like that. And live service games are not for me. I don't care for them at all. So, that's one reason, is companies are obsessed with are trying to make too much live service game too many of them are trying to try to make Fortnite money and that's biting them in, biting them in the ass and reason number two and reason number two is that it could it also comes down to the movie and TV show industry is that studio execs and gaming dev execs, are not very talent friendly at all. And what do I mean by that? Is they're not very artistic friendly at at all. And they're really strict. They're a lot more strict than this studio interference and studio mandates had been around for decades, almost half a century. So this is nothing new, but Studio execs are just are a lot more strict on like, oh, 
um, on like checkboxes what they need to put and what kind of mechanics they want in a video game or something like that. Or, oh, I want you to put microtransactions and loot boxes in this game. Or, oh, I want to put this scene, put this scene in this movie and put that in this movie. I want to put it that, make it like this. Like, no, make it like this, make it like this, make it like that, make it like this, make it like that. No, like studio interference. Like, like, studio execs have too much creative power over projects when is that studio execs are open to new visions, new ideas, and it's also a problem with the film industry as well. And it's also biting studios in, in the ass. That's one reason. Like, if studio execs said, oh, you have a vision, that's interesting, I'll give you money and you can make this project. Jacked. If, if more executives are open to that, then that would be much better. And I think one, in reason number three, is that it it's taking forever to fully let go of the previous gen systems, the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch is still Nintendo's current console. And what do I mean by that? A part of it is COVID and scalpers. That's it's mainly the fall of those two. It makes sense why it's taking many AAA studios forever to just let the PS4 and Xbox One, let's let those systems go. Is the problem, which I don't blame them, but like, ha like let me ask you this. Have you played a game that's on the PS5 or Xbox Series X or any of those two consoles and think to yourself, wow, that is a true next-gen game. Wow. Like, the games I've played so far on... Like, I played Returnal and I played Sonic Frontiers, but, like, I haven't played a game yet like PS5 games are expensive so I don't I have to manage my money and do all that but I haven't played enough where this wow this feels like a next gen game or anything like that and the reason why is that other games that people consider that are really popular like Elden Ring or Hogwarts Legacy a lot of those games have PS4 versions of those game of those games. And the reason why the power of the PS5 and Series X hasn't been new systems power hasn't been used to their full potential yet and people aren't really that satisfied that we're getting a PS5 Pro or anything like that. We don't need a PS5 Pro. It's because the power of those systems aren't fully used because so many games are still were still being developed with the PS4 and Xbox One in mind. It's the fault it's mainly the fault of like COVID and bot scalpers and all that. We should blame those two thing aspects of that. But I think a part of it is Companies being greedy, they're trying to milk as much money as possible. Like, okay, we gotta make sure that we somewhat use the PS5 to its advantage somewhat, try, but we also want to try to make sure that our game would work on the PS4 and make sure that make sure that those that game works on the PS4. We we don't want to make the PS4 version a buggy, glitchy port like Shadow of Mordor on PS3, and we don't want it to be a top, be in top 10 worst po console ports videos. We, we want to make sure that this game works on the PS4 also. Like, that's what it, that's probably the reason why there, 
people aren't feeling satisfaction like, wow, this is a true next gen experience. Wow. Like, not a lot of people in the gaming industry are feeling that. So, that's a problem. That's one reason why. That's reason number three. And I actually came up with a few more. So, is that companies just. It's just taking forever for companies to just let let the PS4 and Xbox One let those systems retire. Like five, eight months, like a few months, five months ago, like last fall, like earlier months ago, the only things that should be coming out by then are are just dance games, sports games. Those should be the only games that should be coming out on the PS4 like five, seven, five to seven months ago, but there's still stuff coming out on the PS4. Like actual stuff on the PS4 still coming out. When there should be only just dance and sports games by by now or seven months ago. And then the fourth reason is that the $70 price tag and games are taking forever to release is is because that it's mainly a Microsoft and Sony problem where Sony like thinks that every gaming and every one of their exclusive projects like has to be a big blockbuster it has to be huge and massive when it doesn't hurt to make more simple, more basic, more lower budget games in between the massive games. Like think Nintendo. Like Nintendo has sports games, they have Mario Kart, more Mario Party and much 2D games and a lot more simpler games that are more simple. Like Nintendo has WarioWare all, all of that. Games that don't take a lot of budget or or development time or whatever. And those are in between their larger, like their 3D Mario game or their Zelda game. They have those smaller projects in between. And Sony and Microsoft don't have any of those. Like like they used to, like so, like, like it, like here's an unpopular opinion. I don't mind paying seventy dollars for like massive games. It depends on how massive the game is. Like, if it is something like Grand Theft Auto Six, then yeah. If if it costs that, if if it's really expensive to make, then yes. Grand Theft Auto Six is the only game ever that I'm okay with paying. Seventy dollars for, but beyond that, I just prefer sixty or less. Just, and it won't be a bad thing if, like, Sony's just spending too much money. Like, Sony thinks that everything has to be a big blockbuster when it really doesn't. Like Spider-Man Two or whatever, or everything has to be a blockbuster that be massive and all that when it's when it really doesn't it's not like so not every game has to be a big blockbuster that's what I'm saying like Sony should bring back Twisted Metal or Prapper the Rapper or Little Big Planet or something more smaller more simple games like like those to fill in the gaps in between the big triple a releases that would really help a, a lot and it'll make you money i promise you that then reason number five is that there are a lot of exclusives or anything like that and what do i mean by that is that microsoft is releasing their xbox games like halo infinite and Starfield on PC and 
And they spent a whole bunch of manufacturing costs on Xbox consoles. And there aren't really any exclusives on Xbox at all. D during the Xbox One, and even during, and to, especially today. And it is an unnecessary, it is a necessary inconvenience because consoles need to have exclusives in order to sell. Like, I know people are annoyed, like, why does, why do, get, why can't every game be multi-platform? Why can't every game be multi-platform? Yes, I do complain about that with streaming services. Like, why are there a billion services with their own exclusives? Why can't there be... Like, I really wish streaming services will be multi... Be multi... Have multi... Like, have shows be multi-platform like video games do. I really wish, but that's... That's off-topic. No, I've been saying that lately, but... The truth is that we don't have any, barely any exclusives. Like, Sony's been releasing some of their games on PC, and... And a lot of people who... Like, what's the point of getting a PS5? I'll just get it on PC when that comes out. That's, that's the thing. That's... And that's also hurting Sony. That's the reason why the PS5 is not getting... PS4 sales at all. So that's reason number five. And I just I'm just making it making up coming up with reasons as I go along filming this. Like I'm just coming up with reasons. So I think the the I came up with five reasons why that we're sort of in a video game crash of 2024. It's not as severe as the 1983 crash, but I came up with five reasons, like like AAA developers not letting the, the previous gen systems go, and that's hurting them. Like, a lot of people may freak out. He's like, Phil Buff Gamer Guy, I can't afford a next gen console. And are you stupid? Don't you rem remember that COVID happened? Yes, I remember COVID happened. I was alive during 2024. And even when I wasn't alive during 9-11, I am aware that 9-11 happened. I'm, I'm well aware that happened and I was even born alive in 9-11, during 9-11. But, and my advice to you for people who still owns a PS4, like, then quit buying AAA games, $50 games, on the PS4. Like, like, quit buying games on the PS4 for spending money on $50 games, $60 games on the PS4. Just save your money, put that money in a savings account, and wait until you can afford it. That money adds up. That's math for you. And... And studio met corporate meddling and companies being overly obsessed with making life service games in Fortnite money and COVID blah 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 and a whole list of other things. Those are the five reasons why I came up. Those are the reasons I came up with of why we're in a game crash right now. And we are going to make it through. Like, I'm not... I doubt gaming will, will die, really, because gaming's more popular than ever. It's no longer a thing where it's for... It's for kids, little kids, that they're cutesy kids things, whatever, like that. Gaming has gotten... Has evolved far, and it eclipses... It's clipped in with the movie industry and television industry, and I'll continue to love video games. I love video games as an art form, and I am, and I can't wait for the future of gaming. And I'll continue to buy games and consoles because I love video games. This is a film buff gamer guy signing out. Goodbye.